On today's episode, I'm going to take a look at one of my favorite companies, and that's Spotify. This is actually one of my tier one stocks in my portfolio right now. And I do believe in the long term of things, this will give me over 100% returns in the upcoming years. So today's episode is going to be broken down into the following. First, I just want to take a look at Spotify and what is their business and what type of revenue and products they provide next i want to take a look at their recent earnings because i want to see how things are moving right now after that i want to take a look at their financials and their financial history and the reason be i, I want to do that is because i'm a long-term investor so i want to see how things are improving in the long term of things right it's nice to look at the quarterly at the recent earnings but that only tells me how things are going this earnings i want to see how things are improving in the long term of things And at the end, I am going to give my thoughts on the company and why I believe right now is still a great buying price for me to invest in Spotify. And like always, if you are new to my channel, if you're a long term investor, if you like to learn about growth stocks, make sure to hit that subscribe button to all my returning viewers. Thank you so much for the support. It truly means a lot. And like always, if you guys want to get in contact with me, you can find me on YouTube, Twitter, on Twitch, live streaming every Sunday at 8.30, on josenaharo.com, or my Discord channel. And like always, all this is free, but remember, this is my opinions. I am by no means a professional, so none of this should be taken as advice. Make sure to talk to your financial advisor before making any financial decisions. Now that we got that out the way, let's get started. So let me know in the comments, guys, are you guys... So let me know in the comments, are you long on Spotify? Are you guys not buying right now? Are you guys waiting for more of a dip? Um, So make sure to let me know right now in the comments. Make sure to hit a thumbs up as well. It helps the channel out so much. And remember, on Sunday, which should be tomorrow at 8.30 Eastern Time, I will be live streaming on Twitch. If you guys want to come ask questions, you should see the link on the pinned description or on the pinned comment or the description. So Spotify right now is sitting at $233.90 and right now it has a market cap of about 44 billion dollars 43.5 it seems and if we take a look at the peak which was somewhere early september was 291 the stock has dropped almost 20 percent ever since the correction um so the i'm actually pretty excited about this correction and for me spotify is a position i hold and i add over time because in the long term of things i do believe it will provide me with great returns so let's try to understand what spotify does so spotify is pretty much a a subscription-based company where you listen to music you can also use it to listen to other aspects or all other audio information a lot of people use it for podcasts though a lot of people compare this to like pandora or to like maybe apple music but i do believe the interface and the interaction that um, that spotify does with their artists to interact with the fan base is just at a whole different level so for example here if we take a look at spotify we're going to take a look at, at one of one of my at my accounts right now right but let's say here there's this artist called marshmallow maybe some of you guys might have heard of him there if he wants to sell mark he can sell it on spotify already and you can put like your concerts if you're listening to your phone the interface here is is pretty is pretty amazing in my opinion and it allows the the artist to truly interact with the with the listener and i do believe this is driving more forces into into spotify if we want to take a quick look at how they collect money um we they make money two ways the first way they make money is through subscription base so if you're a subscriber you pay spotify on a monthly basis there if you are not a uh if you're not a subscriber a subscriber you get ads those ads are being paid by some form of company that spotify is moving into a more social aspect as well and they are doing a lot of exclusive podcasts that are making them to me um a lot of people might think this is weird but you know how there's netflix how there's disney plus how there's amazon video and how about there's all these streaming services just because there's multiple streaming services doesn't mean that the other one's going to go bad and what's helpful within all those streaming services is that they all have their own originals right you most likely go to netflix because of the originals they have and the catalogs they have so now with spotify doing very very similar stuff with 
with the music, um, with the podcast, having exclusive podcasts, those are originals that are going to bring people to come and listen to Spotify. Um, so that's why I, I, I understand the competition outside from other aspects. But we're, if you guys have kept looking at the news, there have been new deals with new exclusivity. They have, uh, for example, Kim Kardashian. Uh, they have Joe Rogan. They have DC Comics. They now just made a new deal with esports. So it's just the building up of content that I believe is a great aspect for Spotify. All right. So now that we understand what Spotify is, this was probably one of the easier companies to to really discuss. I want to take a look at Spotify um, at, at their most recent earnings. So on their most recent earnings, which ended up on July 29th, 2020, so about two months ago, I want to say, not even two months ago, revenue for this company was 1.9 billion euros. And that's up 13% compared to the same time last year. Quarter two gross margins were 25.4%. And this ended up beating the overall consensus, which was 246 Total monthly active users were 299 million, which was the consensus was 298. So this revenue did come a little bit lighter and guide um, was a little bit lower than expected. Um, but one thing we're going to see is one of the revenue segments that comes from that comes from advertisements slowed down this quarter due to the whole COVID situation. Um, so that decreased that revenue growth a bit compared to the same time last year. Even though it's still a double digit, I would have expected a little bit higher, at least in the high teens or in the or in the low twenties. So what else coming to let's take a look at some of the recent news from Spotify. So Spotify recently in September 5th, which was about two weeks ago, they filed for a new patent. And this patent is more like a video moment. Uh, they call it video moments and it's tied to music in the app. So it's very similar to TikTok where you make a short video. But the great thing about this is you make a short video based with the song that you're listening to. So this helps uh, and you'll be able to share it in multiple platforms. And this allows artists, right? If it, I think it's a great tool, right? People are going to be using it. They're going to be sharing it on all their other on all their other social medias. It's going to bring people to to Spotify to listen to that music. This is showing that how Spotify is trying to move into that video strategy um, uh, form of content. And it shows that it's quickly evolving there and it promises the potential of Spotify's becoming more of a social experience as user browsing songs could also find users videos featuring that music. So it's becoming also more of a social platform. And I do believe this is what's going to is what's making this different from all the other applications. Um, like I mentioned, Spotify has a few exclusive deals with like Joe Rogan, Kim Kardashian, Michelle Obama. They have one with DC Comics and they have now with League of Legends, um, which is a big esports sponsorship deal. And they become the exclusive audio service provider for the League of Legends esports league from Riot Games. And this is pretty amazing because we can see with all those deals are from are people with different with different genres, right? I, I wouldn't consider I mean there could be a person that listens to all of this, but maybe someone that might be listening to Kim Kardashian podcast might not be listening to the esports the esports podcast. So now um, you're grabbing user base from all different types of genres and bringing them into Spotify. So this continues to show how Spotify is being is continuing to innovate their platform and making it one big machine. All right, now while we're continuing looking at their at their earnings, they did give a, a letter to shareholders. And I do believe the way their CEO talks to, um, which is Daniel Ek, the founder and the CEO. And I think that's pretty cool when you have the founder still running the company. You have that person who had all that all that hunger still want to build his company. And I do appreciate the comments he made. And let me share you guys some of the things they mentioned. First, they entered a multi-year global license agreement with Universal Musical Group. And that's one of the biggest platforms in music right now. UMG will leverage Spotify's marketplace tools for both frontline and catalog artists to connect them with fans, grow their audience, and better monetize their fan base. They will also work together to develop new products and tools that drive discovery 
and engagement at a scale that's never been that never before existed so we can see how i talked about earlier how spotify allows the artists to really interact with the fans and a big group like this from universal music group is seeing this form of strength from spotify and they made a multi-year global license with them to use spotify for those services next investors often ask the ceo of spotify like well, what's the secret sauce of spotify what makes them different and this guy like i said i really like this this remarks he said it's rarely about one thing instead it's about setting up a culture of experimentation and being willing to double down on opportunities so pretty much what he's saying is there's not one magic way to grow spotify he he they put a lot of money in research and development to try different experiments in different ways to improve the user growth and once they start seeing amazing results with those experiments then they double down over the last two years one of those one of those experiments was the podcast they started seeing strong growth in podcasts and they doubled down now they're going with exclusives now they're increasing the amount of podcasts they have and the second one the second experience they saw is they started launching in new markets they recently launched in russia and 12 other european countries and in the first week the russia was huge with even bigger than our their first week in india so they are are going in different markets and they're seeing that growth outside they are now operating in nearly every country across Europe, but there's still a lot of pent up demand for Spotify in markets around the world, which is why we have plans to further expand globally. So we can see there is still so much growth coming in with Spotify. And now let me show you guys their recent earnings, how their revenue is broken down, right? So they have they have totally monthly active users. So totally monthly active users for this most recent quarter were 299 million. That's up 29% compared to the same time last year and up 5% compared to a quarter ago. So we're seeing constant growth in monthly active users. Out of those monthly active users, there's two types. There's the premium subscribers, which I mentioned, are those that pay. And those that is now $138 million, uh, 138 million listeners. And that's up 27% year over year. And it's up 6% quarter over quarter. And let me zoom in maybe a little bit more so you guys can see this. Then they have ad supported monthly active users. And these are the free users, the ones that get that that get the ad when they listen to stuff that's 170 active users and that's up to 170 million active users and that's up 31 percent year over year and up four percent compared to a quarter ago so we are seeing growth in both premium subscribers and ad supporter but look even though premium subscribers is a smaller portion of of the monthly active users they make up most of the revenue revenue this quarter was 188 1.8 close to 1.9 billion dollars right and out of that 1.9 billion dollars about 1.8 came from premium subscribers 131 million came from ad supporter unfortunately ad supported is down 21 percent but the main reason is because a lot of businesses were not promoting right now during that time of COVID 19 so we saw that decrease um, but i do they do mention that as the quarter as at the end of the quarter things started to pick up back in the advertisement world so we're going to see some more growth there um i do believe in the upcoming quarter and next let's take a quick look at their balance sheet another great thing that i like about spotify is they really have no long-term debt minus leases and, and minus leases but any form of long-term loans or, or debt is something they do not have. They have about two points, about one point seven billion dollars of cash and cash equivalents. And like I mentioned, no, no true long-term debt. So this is a company right now that has um, that has a, a very strong balance sheet. But this is the case because Spotify at the moment spotify at the moment is not profitable it it, it it is getting to that and we're going to take a look at that in a bit now it's getting into that almost break even line but within the next three years spotify is expected to be profitable but this is the thing right this is a growth company and it's a growth company with a great balance sheet and even though they're not profitable right now you one has to understand where they are in the stage of a business for a company that's not profitable but is growing and is expected to be profitable soon i tend to be a little bit harder on that balance sheet i want to make sure that they have plenty of cash to pretty much run to continue to run their business and that's what we're seeing with spotify with that great balance sheet
All right, so now let's take a look at their financial history. Like I mentioned, we took a look at the recent quarters and we saw a decent growth there, but we want to make sure that the company is also growing throughout the past years. We want to make sure that these numbers, I, I, these are numbers that are not just a random, a random event. So let's take a look at revenue growth for Spotify. And here, revenue growth right now uh, in the year of 2019, for the full year, physical year of 2019, which was which ended about two quarters ago, they grew about 25% year over year compared to 2018. In 2018, they grew 23.11% compared to 2017. In 2017, they grew 58. And in 2016, they grew 47.5% in revenue. So we can see this has been steadily growing its revenue, even though now it's in the low. 20s low 20s is still very strong revenue growth um if i may say now let's take a look at their margins so gross margins for spotify 10 have been improving over the years right now at the end of 2019 was 25.5 percent 2018 was 25.7 so it kind of dip a little bit but it if we take a look at 2017 was 20.8 in 2016 was 13.6 and in 2015 it was 11.6 so we can see there has been an overall trend increase of gross margins and this most recent quarter i think they mentioned their margins were 25.4 percent which is kind of in line with what happened last year the thing i'm really liking is look profit margins are getting better back then in 2017 profit margins were as low as negative 30.2 percent in 2015 they were as low as negative 11.9 in the past two years they've actually been below three percent only so profit margins below negative three percent so profit margins are getting better and we can see we can taste it right spotify is soon to become profitable and we can just see it here with the trend of things next i want to take a look at their net cash flow from operations so if you guys don't know net cash flow from operations is the the money this company collects from its everyday activities from its main business and we can see this company has been profitable and ha has had profitable net cash flow from operations since 2015. So it does, it's always good to have that positive cash flow coming in. So it means they can continue to run that business. Um, and that's revenue is increasing. We see this bump up in net cash flow from operations and we can see it from the margins itself. In, 20, in 2016's margins for op operating cash flow margins were 3.42%. And now it's sitting at about 8.4%. So it, we can see this trend line continue to increase in margins of cash flow. Next, free cash flow as well. Free cash flow, this company has been positive free cash flow in the terms of things. And if you guys don't know, free cash flow is your net cash flow from operations minus like any long term investments they're doing. So again, as revenue continues to increase, so does that free cash flow, um, free cash flow. And we can see, so does the free cash flow margins. Free cash flow margins for 2019 were 6.5%, and compared to 2016, which were as low as 2.5. So we can see the company overall is just improving everywhere. It's improving its margins in cash flow, in free cash flow, cash flow from operations. It's improving its profit margins. It's 10, it seems to have flatline on its gross margins at the moment, but we're still seeing a very strong revenue growth and we're also seeing a very healthy balance sheet. So now I want, let's take a look at the future growth and why I believe Spotify will give me um, great returns in the long term of things. So here I'm using Simply Wall Street and they give me the expected revenue for Spotify. And these revenues are actually averages of multiple analysts. For example, here for the for the end of 2021, they have about 26 analysts. And these are the average. For the end of 2022, they have about 22 analysts and so on. Obviously, the, the further the years go on, the less analysts are willing to, to project numbers. But I do believe it's still a great estimate tool to use for future valuations. So now I want to now that we know where I get I'm getting these revenue numbers from, let me explain this here. So here I am a long-term investor and as a long-term investor, I want returns to be to beat the market. On average, the market returns 100% in 7 years. So I want 100% faster than 7 years because if it's not faster than 7 years, what's the point on choosing a company? Might as well just invest in the market. In theory, I want investments to double in at least 5 years. In 5 years, if I can do that, I can double in 5, then I can double in 10, and then I can double in 15 years, right? It continue that just continues to double and double and double. If I did it with the market within that same time frame, it would only happen in year 7 and year 14. So I'm pretty much 
increasing my growth dramatically by just removing a few years of doubling. And that's the great thing of, of compound interest. So here I ended up putting year zero, which is their most recent year revenue. And I put the estimated growth of revenue growth as well. And we can see on this for year one, which is the end of this year, they're expected to grow 17% based on analysts. And they and 17, 22%, 18%, 19%, and 15% by the end of year five. And these numbers are, I wouldn't say are impossible to reach. We took a look at the historical values of how Spotify has been growing, and it's been growing at at least the lowest this was was negative 23%. So these values to me make perfect sense. These, I don't think they're far fetched. Um, so now what I ended up doing is unfortunately these, these this revenue was in, in euros. So what I then ended up doing was I ended up converting that last year, which was year five into United States dollars at current rates. Unfortunately, right, rates tend to change. So this can, can change things a lot. And that gives me $18.5 billion of revenue in year five in US dollars. All right, so now what I wanted to do is I wanted to take a look at a company that's kind of been here before Spotify, but is in a very similar market space and what has been their average price to sales ratio throughout the years. The first one that came to mind was Netflix, right? Netflix has a very similar, I want to say a very similar concept to Spotify, except Spotify would be in the audio world. So I went here and I took a look at Netflix historical price to sales ratio. In 2019, the price to sales ratio was around 7.7. 7. On 2018, it was 7.3. On 2016, it was 6.2. On 2015, it was 7.1. And we can see, right, that's five, that's five years of history right here. Uh, and it's been above six. So, what, uh, so on average, it tends to actually be seven. So what I ended up doing is then I ended up creating a, a multiples, different scenarios. So imagine if, if right now Spotify in year five has a similar average price to sales ratio as Netflix did in the past five years, which was seven. That would give me a future cap of about $129 billion in market cap. Right now, market cap I mentioned was about $44 billion. So that's almost a 200% return. So that's not double my money, that's triple my money if it comes with that same, with that average that Netflix has had in the past five years. Now it might be like Jose, seven price to sales ratio might be a little too high maybe let's drop it down to five price to sales ratio so if it, if it has at a five price to sales ratio and i do believe that's uh that's being that's really reasonable right we've seen netflix um netflix had not have uh, uh anything below five to price sales ratio in the past five years the only time we've seen that the first time that happened was in 2014 um, in the earliest, right, 2014. They've had it before then, but it was at a whole different league there. But 2014, that's a long back before we've seen anything below five. But still, let me put this so we can so I can be a little bit conservative. Even with the five to price with the five price to sales ratio, the gains would give me a future market cap of $92 billion. $92 billion is still 111 percent on the current market cap that to me is insane and now let's wishful thinking let's do wishful thinking imagine a 10 price to sales ratio this i would consider very expensive but um expensive but not unlikely not impossible very hopeful wishful thinking but again very unlikely but with that a 10 price to sales ratio would give this a 322 percent gain almost four times my money so that that to me is it, amazing right now spotify after doing this video has become it, it's a perfect example why it's a tier one stock for me right with a market cap to get six to get a hundred percent at seven price to sales ratio which was that average i looked at would have to be market cap of 64 64 billion dollars that would be that a stock price would be 345 so to me, anything below 345 is a great buy for me still. And right now we're sitting at 237. A super buy would be anything below $247. Right now it's at 233. So for me, this is a super buy. Again, this is just my opinion, but the numbers look right, right? And the numbers look good. And this doesn't mean in year five, I'm expected to sell the company, right? That That's not what I'm saying by this. At year five, I would do something very similar to this, right? I would make a new graph and try to see if 
based on the new growth that they are expected to see within the upcoming years is it still expected to beat the market if it's not unfortunately it means i would have to find another investment but as of right now it seems like this is a better investment for me than the overall market and i'm not gonna lie after doing this video i am even more bullish and again right these are not sell points for me it's not like i said i'm not selling off when it hits these kinds of valuations it's just i would relook at my i would relook at, at my scenario we look at everything and see how things are going to play out in the future so like always i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode let me know if you guys are enjoying this final this is this thing that i'm doing here with with the with the price point for me a, a buying price point it is something that I'm, I'm starting really new and one thing another thing i want to say is even though I'm doing price to sales ratio, there's multiple ways of doing valuations. To me, this was the simplest way to do it. And again, it's not uh, it's not a hundred percent that's going to go there, but at least it gives me some form of reasoning behind that. Yes, this is there is potential that I am correct that this is a better investment. But remember, the market is a risky game, and it's not a hundred percent that this is going to happen. But at least. I have actual numbers that make sense. I'm looking at price to sales ratio compared to another company that's similar, and it's telling me that yes, if you if it continues this growth, it will it could get to that level. It's not impossible. So, like always, if you guys enjoyed the episode, please please post a comment and hit the like button. It helps the channel out so much. So, take care, guys. Have a good night, and see you next time.